Hi everyone. Well, today I want to cover a bridge in England. This bridge came to my attention through a video posted by a channel called Auto Shenanigans. And the presenter seemed quite alarmed about the condition of the bridge and suggested that perhaps it might even be in danger of collapse. I don't think that's the case at all. But I want to give you my perspective, the engineering perspective about what's going on, what typically happens with bridges that have fills for the abutments placed on compressible soils over time, and uh, just kind of give you a full range of how these sites are investigated, how they're designed, and how they're constructed. So this is a picture of the bridge here in the auto shenanigans post. He showed this offset, and the picture was so tightly framed, I couldn't really tell what was the bridge and what was the approach, but I'm certain that the approach is on the right side of the picture, the lower level of the uh, concrete, and that's corroborated by a later segment of the video, which shows a car hitting a low area or a dip just as they approach the bridge. So it's been in the news about this channel's video, and they got a statement from Stephen Tolborn, head of planning and development for the East region said, following construction, it is common to see a degree of settlement to embankments. This normally stops following a period of establishment and only requires limited road surfacing to address any slight changes to the carriageway surface. So again, that's consistent with my uh, thinking that it's just settlement of the approach and there's no issue with the bridge. Certainly if there was, I would hope that they would say as much, but they expect settlement at the approaches. This may be more of a nuisance than they had expected, but eventually I think they'll come in and, and regrade that area. They'll have to stop traffic for a while, maybe do a lane at a time, and tear up the pavement, place new fill in, recompact it, and then level things out and replace the slab. But last year, local politicians raised concerns about it, and National Highways indicated they were going to monitor it. And people are apparently complaining locally that no monitoring equipment has been installed to date. Quote from that article here, problems causing a Cambridgeshire bridge to sink appear no closer to being resolved one year after they were reported. So this is what we're talking about. This is a detail for a New Jersey bridge, but you've got the roadway off to the right, the asphalt pavement. Then you have a transition slab, approach slab, and then you have the abutment. And so I've gather from the photos and the descriptions that the settlement is occurring in the approach slab area before you get to the actual abutment of the bridge. Now this is the area we're talking about. It's the A14, which a few years back was a multi-mile extension to connect to existing A14. And this is the area that we're talking about near Brampton, England, Cambridge area. And so this area used to be all swampland, marshland, the area called the Fens. And apparently after the British Civil War ended in 1649. A lot of land was reclaimed for development. So levees were constructed to keep the seawater out. Grading and leveling and fill placement occurred. And you can see from this soils map, as you would imagine, there's a lot of soils that are peats, sands, loams, which is a silty clay, clays, so on. Now peat is a soil that consists primarily of organic matter. So it's highly compressible, as can be the loam and the clays. And when they're deposited, the most stress they have on it is as it sits. And then if you place fill or build anything on top of it, that introduces additional stress that causes what is called consolidation, a time dependent effect where water is squeezed out between the, the pores of the soil matrix. And this can be quite a problem in, in swampland areas. Here's a picture from Skanska website about this project. You can see quite a marshy area. You can see some large embankments that were built as part of this project. Project facts off the Skanska website, start date 2015, completion date 2020. It was one and a half billion pound project. So this schematic comes from a companion bridge on this A14 extension. They don't represent the fill at the abutments, but you can see the abutments are on deep foundations. Here, this suggests uh, perhaps pipe piles, but some type of deep foundation that's gonna fully support the bridge structure. And they had some novel construction where they basically built the bridge off-site and transported in mass on these crawlers. Now, the fill at the abutment was tens of feet tall and it was internally reinforced with GeoGrid made by Tensar, according to their website, uh, touting their involvement with this project. So a, a GeoGrid is a polyethylene material, starts as a solid sheet, 
then it's punched and stretched so that soil can get in between the ribs of this grid and really lock this reinforcing layer into place. You install multiple layers as you're coming up with the embankment fill at the abutment. It looks like that was a solid mass of material, well reinforced, so the settlement is occurring in mass with consolidation of the underlying clays apparently. So there was an extensive geotechnical investigation done for this project by Geoscience Ireland. They did 158 boreholes, a maximum depth of 20 meters. They did some core holes. They did uh, static comb penetration testing. They did SPTs, dynamic comb penetrometer testing, and so on. They also installed a variety of instrumentation including vibrating wire piezometers. So that's to measure the pore pressure in the soil uh, in situ and as the embankment fill height increases, those pressures increase, and as the soil consolidates, those pressures dissipate over time. So just to show you what a typical investigation looks like, this is augering of the soil. It's a hollow stem auger. You remove the center plug after you get to your target depth, and then you're able to go in with split spoon samplers as the SPT. So the SPT blow count is the number of blows it takes to advance the sampler 12 inch interval. So typical clay soils are maybe three to eight blows per foot. And as they get stiffer and harder, then of course the blow counts go up. And you can use the blow counts to get an idea of the consistency of the material, how it's likely to behave and inform where you wanna do higher end testing. So if you identify lower blow count material, that would be a good candidate for a relatively undisturbed Shelby tube sample so that you can do high-end laboratory testing. And this is what it looks like collecting a Shelby tube sample. It's hydraulically pushed into the ground, into a thin wall steel tube. And then that sample is extruded in the laboratory, trimmed and used for a variety of high-end tests. For a project like this, we'd be interested in performing consolidation testing. So the sample's trimmed, put it in a dish with a drainage media at the top and bottom, you apply a load to it, and over time, settlement occurs. So for consolidation, think of squeezing water out of a sponge, where the holes in the sponge represent the pore space in the soil that contains the water. So by applying an increase in stress to the soil layer, initial part of the load is carried by the water. And as the water drains off, more and more of the applied stress is carried by the grains of soil themselves. So when we perform a consolidation test, we plot the applied effective stress and the void ratio or strain. And you get these types of curves where initially it's flat if the soil had a past pressure higher than current pressure. So you get reloading settlement, which involves not much settlement at all. And then you get this inflection point where what they call virgin compression or primary consolidation occurs. For the soils at this A14 over A1 site, you would expect the soils to be either normally consolidated or under consolidated. So as soon as you apply loading, you're gonna be on the steep portion of the curve. And then you can see the bottom curve is when unloading occurs. Now this is a plot of log time versus the void ratio. And you see the upper part of the curve is primary consolidation, but in organic clay soils, you can have a tremendous amount of secondary compression. It could be a large part of the total settlement and it takes much longer for that to occur. And that's typically called creep settlement. And that type of secondary or creep settlement can be very difficult to predict based on laboratory samples relative to what's actually gonna happen in the field. So another thing that we do for the consolidation test is determine the time rate. So how quickly does the soil consolidate over time? Now, one of the things that can be done to speed up the rate of settlement is to install these geosynthetic wick drains. So you have a geotextile that wraps an inner plastic core of these drainage channels. Here's a website by a company that installs these drains. And they talk about consolidation can take decades in these types of soils. So let's look at a quick video here of the wick drain installation process. You have this mandrel that's fed by a spool of geosynthetic material, the geosynthetic wick drain, and these can be installed relatively quickly, particularly in soft soils like you would have at this site. Now, I couldn't locate the geotechnical report for this project. I would be virtually certain that they did use wick drains at the abutment fills because otherwise the settlements 
would be excessive post-construction. And we know they're already having some issue with post-construction settlement, but again, I think it's probably related to the difficulty in predicting the amount of secondary consolidation. But important thing to do when you're placing these fills for our highway embankment, in fact, we've got a project going on right now where we're examining this exact issue, is you want to install poor pressure monitoring devices because as soon as you apply a load on the soil through the construction of an overlying embankment, the water pressure in the soil increases. And there are two main types of piezometers. You have what's called open standpipe where you have a slotted section of casing and then you have a solid section which extends to the ground surface and you can use what's called water level indicators. It's a uh, sensor on a cable and there's foot marks on the cable and you lower it down and when that sensor contacts the water it closes the circuit and a light comes on and there's a little buzzer. So you pull that probe up and down on the end of the cable, no signal, signal until you get exactly where that contact is, where that water level surface. Uh, an easier way of doing it in terms of automation is to use what's called a vibrating wire piezometer, which is a sealed electronic transducer, and it's installed at the target depth, and there can be multiple target depths within a given borehole, but that's what that detail looks like. So you first drill a hole, and you install the casing, and you backfill the zone of interest with granular fill like sand, and then you insert the transducer inside the casing. And what's nice about these is the data collection can be automated with information pushed to the internet. Another important thing to monitor during fill placement is settlement, and these aren't really high tech. It's a steel plate with an inner rod welded to it, and then you have an outer casing, and you just extend these from the original ground line. As the fill goes up, you just add more and more sections of pipe. And let's take a look at this video here where they're taking measurements of the extension rods on these settlement plates for an embankment fill for our highway in Florida. So these areas are flagged off so the uh, construction equipment doesn't hit it. And fill placement continues until the embankment's topped out. And you're taking these readings and you're getting a really good idea of not only how much settlement has occurred, but the rate of settlement. So the idea is you want to monitor that closely so that you can predict when the bulk of the settlement will be completed. And you want that to be done well before completion of construction, before you pave the roadway, before you install utilities along the roadway. And that's what one of these plots look like. So the upper plot are readings from vibrating wire piezometers, and the lower plot are settlement readings. So negative is settlement amount. And you can see the pore pressures increase as fill placement starts and is completed. Then once the fill is topped out, the pressures start to dissipate. And you can see here from the settlement plot, settlement is ongoing as the soil consolidates and those pore water pressures dissipate. And it looks like here they actually applied a surcharge loading. So they place more fill than what they would actually need at the end to increase the rate of settlement. And you can tell here that they unloaded the foundation soils by removing that surcharge. So they pretty quickly had rebound of the foundation soil. And then that was reflected in a decrease in pore water pressures with about a two week lag time. So this just shows you this surcharge. They place more fill than they'll eventually need so they can speed the rate of consolidation. And again, I don't know if this A1, A14 bridge utilized surcharging at the abutments and whether they used wick drains, but certainly that would have been in order if they were concerned about excessive post-construction settlement. So I'll continue to follow this story. I'm not really alarmed about this bridge. I think the locals have a, a good understanding of what's going on out there. It certainly is a nuisance and it certainly can be disconcerting to the traveling public, but uh, I don't think there's any need to be overly alarmed about this situation there in the Brampton area of England. But again, I've got a project where I'm implementing just such a study where we'll be doing field investigations, installing instrumentation, and predicting the amount of post-construction settlement that'll occur. And we also plan to implement uh, drainage so that it'll speed the rate of settlement during fill placement. So I think it's gonna be an interesting series of videos, so please stay tuned for those. At this point, I wanna send a shout out to those of you who have donated to buy me a coffee. That's an excellent way to support the channel. I also want to thank the channel members. The membership ranks are growing day by day, and I really appreciate that. And I certainly want to send a shout out to those of you who provided super thanks. Thanks very much, everyone.